Hello everybody, welcome to the Personal Excellence Web Lectures. Today's topic is about how to be happy. Well, I'm sure many of us have times when we feel down, upset, depressed, moody, angry, disappointed, or just simply negative. And the thing is, there is really no reason for us to feel that way. I believe that all of us are in life to be happy, to be fulfilled, to really live a purposeful and meaningful existence. And every single second we spend feeling unhappy or negative every day is simply just one second taken away from feeling happy. And I know that sometimes we may feel negative and we may find it hard to control or manage those emotions. So with today's web lecture on how to be happy, I really want to share with you 10 key timeless principles that I use to remain happy and to feel happy. And it is my wish that uh, by applying these principles, you'll be able to constantly achieve a fulfilling, happy state in life. So let us now go to the first principle. And the first principle is about attending to your negative emotions and thoughts and not repressing them. Now, I think that um, this is definitely very, very important. And this is why I stated it as the first principle. There are many people who actually feel unhappy and when they feel unhappy, they don't attend to these thoughts. They actually put them away, bury them, and then continue living about their daily lives as if nothing has happened. And they just try to be happy and then they force themselves to be happy. But the big thing here to know about happiness is that happiness is a natural state of being that you are in without having to try. Like you do not need to put effort to be happy. You are naturally someone who can be happy by yourself. And in any situations or cases where you feel unhappy, it's because there is a certain reason, a certain trigger, a certain cause that's making you feel those negative emotions. And it is absolutely pertinent that you actually focus and understand what is that source of unhappiness and then address that. Because until you do, those unhappy emotions are not going to go away. So I know sometimes people may have problems and they don't talk about that or they don't face them or they don't deal with those obstacles and that is not good at all because when you don't deal with these problems, they will just remain there. They're not going to go away until you deal with them. It's like this classic situation of like the ostrich and the ostrich is um, famously known for burying the head under the sand when there's a sign of danger. But the thing is, burying your head under the sand and then seeing just darkness doesn't mean that the danger or the source of unhappiness is not there. It is still there. It is just that you can't see it. And just because you can't see it doesn't mean it, it doesn't pose a threat. It doesn't mean that it's not going to continue to affect you. In fact, it will definitely do in a subconscious manner. And this is why people who ignore their problems, they ignore their emotions, they ignore their thoughts, they actually don't really feel happy at all. They may try and force themselves to feel happy, but they find that it just gets wearier and wearier every day. And that is because whatever effort they're trying to exert to, to feeling happy, it just is unable to repress those subconscious um, negative feelings or thoughts. And until they finally face them, they will continue to feel that way. So it is absolutely important that you attend to your negative emotions and thoughts and don't repress them. So whenever you feel like you're unhappy, talk it out. You know, go and find someone, a friend um, that who is willing to listen to you, a close friend, and then just share the problems. Someone who is empathetic. I mean, don't go and, and approach someone who is negative himself or herself or, or discouraging himself or herself because um, the kind of feedback you're going to get is probably going to make you feel worse. So talk to uh, people, talk to close friends. You can also do journaling, writing out your thoughts. Um, and basically just uh, dumping them. I think having a diary or having a journal or a blog that is great in terms of processing your thoughts. So I often recommend the exercise of brain dumping where you just write out everything that's on your mind onto a piece of paper or onto a document and then just really trash it all out. See it as just dumping all, all the uh, negative stuff on your mind onto that thing and then, and then after that just you know letting it go. Or uh, one thing that you can do as well is to read what you type and, and it really helps to give you insight on what is 
have been troubling you and what has been on your mind. Other things that can help uh, includes meditation as well, just sitting still and then, um, letting the, flood, the thoughts flow out of your mind. And um, doing activities that you like will also be helpful. So for example, uh, watching your favorite movie, um, playing your favorite games, watching your favorite drama serials, watching certain comedies that you like, that will be great as well. As well as a walk in the park or just taking some exercise. But it's important that uh, always to attend to the negative emotions and thoughts at the end of the day. Like don't ignore them. Like uh, really understand what's causing them and understand where they're coming from. Okay, um, the second principle is really to take action on what's making you unhappy. So in the first step, you have um, worked on attending to your negative emotions. And the second principle is to then take action on that. So uh, when you really process what's making you feel unhappy and you really understand the root cause of that, then you should act on that. So just being aware of what's making you unhappy and not doing anything about that it's not going to change anything. Like the source of unhappiness is still going to be there. And it's important that you do take action. And I'm always all about taking action. I always talk about on PE. And because taking action is what changes things. Like if you don't take action and all you do every day is just theorize about the world and about life and about yourself, nothing changes. Like you're just in the same life, the same thing, facing the same thing every day. And you should most definitely always um, take action and take a proactive approach towards making your life, your world, a better place. And I really like this quote by Mark Twain. And this quote says, Don't go around saying the world owes you a living. The world owes you nothing. It was here first. And it really helps to you to just understand that it is really all about taking action at the end of the day. Like the onus toward living a better life is really up to you. So whenever you drill down to what's making you unhappy, do something about it. Don't just talk about it. Make things happen. And there are certain tips I have for you on, on how to do that. Like the first tip would be to fix the issue right away. So don't wait around on it. Like the more you wait on it, the more you're going to have to to live with that issue. And that's just pointless. Like if you have to deal with it at the end of the day, just do it right away, now. The second thing is to focus on what you can affect and not what you can't affect. So um, I always talk about uh, basically two big things that you can affect in life. And these two things are A, the present, not the future, not the past, but the present moment, and B, you yourself. Not other people, not your parents, not your kids, not your partner, not your friends, but yourself. Like the present moment and yourself are the two only things you can ever control and change in life. Like everything else is just indirect consequence of what you do and you can never expect those things to change. And when you focus on the things that you can change and you can affect and not the things that you can't, you become happier and happier and you start to know uh, what are the things that you can really uh, have an impact on and what are the things that you should not expect to change. The third tip I have on how to, on taking action on the things that are making you unhappy is to remember that every single problem always has a solution. So I think sometimes when we are faced with the hardest problem we have ever faced before, it is easy to feel down, it is easy to feel overwhelmed, and it's easy to feel like we're never getting out of this. But know that you're stronger than anything else in the world. That whatever problem that you're facing now, there is a solution. And if anybody can do it, you can. So don't feel down. Um, know that it is always darkest before dawn. And as long as you persist, as long as you keep working and hacking away at the problem, you're going to find a solution. So know that even the biggest, biggest problem can uh, be worked through just step by step just little bit by little bit so don't give up don't feel unhappy and, and don't feel overwhelmed by the situation okay whatever you're, you're doing now whatever you're facing now is just going to make you stronger and stronger and the fourth tip i have is that once you have done everything within your control 
Now, just let go and let things run their course. So I think sometimes we may feel uh, very hung up, like even when we have done everything, we are just hinging on the uh, on the outcome. We're just waiting and ex expecting things to happen. And then we feel like um, our heart is just racing and racing. And we feel like we're going to get a heart attack if the things don't happen the way we want to. And that is not necessary at all. Now, if you've already done everything that you can, just let go. Remember what are the two things I said that uh, are the things that you can effect? First, the present moment. Second, yourself. Now, if you have done everything that's in the present moment, and if you have already um, done everything that you can, then if there's nothing else that you can do, then just let go and let things run their course. Now, there can be situations where um, you just feel like you want to do more, and uh, even though you've already done the necessary steps, and if that's the case, just focus on identifying what are the things that you can actually work on more, like if it makes you feel better. I found that taking action always helps me to uh, feel better because I'm doing something about a situation. So if ever there's a situation where you're just waiting for something to happen and you feel so um, uptight about it, then one thing that might help is to just see what else can you do, like what more can you do. And that will really help to remove your anxiety away and just focus on being proactive and focus on being constructive. Okay, so now let's go to the third principle on how to be happy. And the third principle is really to update your belief system. So I think that um, sometimes we may take action on every single thing that uh, we can and then uh, we attend out to our thoughts and everything. But we may still feel unhappy. And if that's the case, then maybe there's something that is wrong in, in your beliefs and um, that there's something to be addressed in your beliefs. So I think then the question comes to, okay, so what's the right belief and what's the wrong belief? And I think ultimately at the end of the day, a belief is a belief. Like uh, something is only true if you think it is true and no one can make you accept something unless you yourself accept it. And I think it is most important that you adopt beliefs that are true for yourself and you adopt beliefs that make you happy that empower you. Because there is no point in holding on to a belief that makes you unhappy. There is no point in holding on to a belief that disempowers you. So if you are faced with a belief that you are not a good person, this is another belief that you are a good person, which is the belief that empowers you, which is the belief that makes you happy, and, and which is the belief that will make you soar, that will make you achieve your goals, they will make you break through new grounds and just reach new heights. Is it the first one or is it the second one? And if it's the second one, then go for it. Like stop holding on to the beliefs that are making you unhappy. Just go for the things that make you happy and hold on to them. So for those of you who have the Live a Better Life in 30 Days program, which you can find at personalexcellence.co slash 30, which is 30DLBL, um, in the program on day 28, which is about letting go, I talk about how you should just let go of the things that don't serve you and really embrace the things that serve you. And these can include people, your environment, um, your career, things in your life, as well as your beliefs. So it is absolutely pertinent that you focus on embracing the things that really empower and serve you and just let go of the stuff that don't. And I think that a lot of people um, tend to hang on and hold on to the past uh, that they are not happy about. And I think the very important thing here is to ask yourself, is holding on to the past making you feel happy or unhappy? And if the answer is unhappy, then you know what you should do next. You should really just let go of them. Because just continuing to replay those past unhappy incidences over and over and over in your mind doesn't really serve you any good, does it? It's just like when someone gives you a bad movie and you just absolutely hate that, do you keep rewatching and replaying that on your laptop every day? No, you don't. I mean, people would think like you're crazy. Like, why would you, why would you just keep doing that? 
and that's the exact same thing like events from the past whatever has happened um, there are the things that we can consciously choose to let go if we want to and there is no need to keep replaying them in our mind if they are not making us happy at all so I talk about how to let go of unhappy past on the blog and um, I will share the links in the description section of the web lecture but if you want to access it uh, basically it is personalexcellence.co slash blog slash ask dash celeste dash letting dash go so ask celeste letting go with the dash in between uh, each words and day 25 of be a better me in 30 days program which is about forgiving yourself uh, also talks about how to let go of unhappy past and for those of you who don't have be a better me in 30 days program which is a character transformation program you can read more about it at personalexcellence.co slash 30 the number 30 bbm okay so now let us go to the fourth principle on how to be happy and the fourth principle is really about learning to see the positive versus the negative side of things okay so i think there are always two ways you can see each situation you can see it as positive and you can see it as negative and there is no right or no wrong to be honest it is really just about what you want to see and personally for me i really learned to just focus on seeing the positive side of things all the time and i remember there was this time in the past when i was in my previous job like um there were times where things were just so incredibly stressful like just so tough that like there was once when i just broke down when i was showering because everything was so tough and and it was not even about um the workload or the challenges but that uh, i was in a situation whereby i just wanted to really grow and really to take new things but um i was in a position where i was not allowed to take on new jobs and new tasks so that was not good at all because I was, i'm so passionate about growth that i just want to keep learning and growing and I, I couldn't believe that um the people were not allowing me to take on new stuff out of no fault or no reason um, of my own so then uh, in the midst of that situation so i was just i suddenly just had this aha moment you know while i was just crying in the shower and i just realized like you know i can be just feeling like utterly miserable here or i can totally make the best out of this situation and then really turn it around and turn it into something that i can do something about and and in both situations the situation remains exactly the same it the, the only thing that changes is how i approach it and that just really made my eyes open like wide open because it just struck me like it was always all about me and all about how i handled the situation like it was not really about the situation itself and as long as i, as I keep adopting that approach I can basically mold and change any situation to the way that I want to. So that was really a big aha moment for me and that's when I realized on such a even deeper, higher level that it is really about the perception and how we see things. And a lot of times the people who are negative will just feel like the world is full of bad stuff and people are bad. Like all of us are living in the same world. Like what's the difference here? The difference here is the perception, the lenses that we use to see reality. And I guess, I mean, someone can always wear a, a negative lens and just keep um, moaning about the world, keep whining about it, and just basically keep harping on the things that are bad and going wrong. But what are you going to get out of that? I mean, if you just keep harping on the things that are going wrong, then you're just going to keep getting the things that are wrong. You're just going to be stuck with that. Like, do you want to do that? Or, or do you want to focus on the things that are good, that are positive, that are going to lift your life to better and greater heights? Because if you just keep dragging around and carrying a heavy load of things, you're just carrying that weight. 
behind your shoulders all the time. How can you soar like an eagle in the sky if you are holding to such heavy stuff? You really have to just let them go and brush them off and really just take flight. So seeing the positive is very, very important over the negative side of things. And obviously, this is also about being conscious about doing it. It's not just saying, oh, la la la, there's nothing wrong with this world, I'm happy, you know, everything's breezy. It is about understanding and recognizing that there are also things out there that may not be what you want, but choosing to adopt a positive perception and approach toward things and then focusing really on um, the concrete, taking the concrete act, uh, action steps and the steps to really change things and make things the way you want. Okay, so here are just some quick tips on how you can always spot the good things in each situation. The first thing is recognize that there's always something good to be gained from each situation and it's up to you to find that. The second thing is asking yourself what experiences have you gained from this incident? Because um, everything you experience, both good and bad, would not have happened if not for the incident. So always understand and accept those experiences and really just uh, integrate them. The third tip is to ask yourself, what lessons have you learned? Because these lessons are part and parcel of the each experience and you will not be able to gain these lessons if not again for the incident. The fourth tip is to recognize that what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. So with uh, everything that happens, you would have picked up some skills from it be it soft skills or hard skills. And what are these skills? The fifth tip would be to recognize that every single problem comes with its set of opportunities. So ask yourself, what opportunities lie before you now because of this problem? So for example, someone who is immensely obese, 400 pounds overweight. And for this person, yes, there is 400 pounds of weight to be lost and there is 400 pounds of liability. But there is also an opportunity here. There is an opportunity to lose these 400 pounds of excess weight. And in the event that he or she eventually loses that weight, then he or she would have solved one of the biggest, most stubborn obstacle in the world that many people in the world face. Obesity, overweight. And that means that he or she has found that solution to the problem and can actually help other people who are facing that same issue. And this a solution, he can he or she can do like make it via like a book, he can write a blog about it, he can set up like a program or a course that people can follow, and this solution will just simply change other people's lives for the better. So then this is an opportunity here. Like for every big problem you have there is always a big opportunity. And, and if the problem is small, you're going to only have a small opportunity. So know that no matter how hard your problem is, the harder it is, the better it is. Because now you're faced with a big opportunity to really add value to other people's lives once you solve and figure out how to just change and turn the problem around. Okay. The fifth principle on how to be happy is just to let go of expectations and to focus on intentions. So I find that a big problem that people have is that they just really attach themselves to expectations on how things should be. And I myself have found that um, it is a lot more fulfilling and rewarding when you focus on your intentions behind the goals and sort of just give things um, the free roaming space to become how they should be. So for what it's worth, continue to set goals. Continue to set high targets, um, high visions, big visions, grand visions. And that is great. And that is what I always um, support and talk about. But at the same time, don't be attached to that goal. Like, don't think that that is the only way your goal can ever be manifested and ever be fulfilled because that is not healthy and um, that really suffocates your goal as well. Instead, focus on the intention behind your goal. 
So for example, let's say you want to set up a business and um, in the business like you want to set up a restaurant and you want to sell Italian food and the reason why you want to sell Italian food is because you really want to make people appreciate the Italian culture and you want to make people realize that um, there can be healthy food that uh, can be done the Italian way. So then you set a target like you want to get um, $10,000 of revenue for the first month and likewise for the next few months as well. And then when let's say you don't achieve the target for the first month, then it's possible that you start feeling disappointed and un unhappy. Let's say you really just achieve um, $5,000 in the first month. But the thing here is that you are unhappy because you focused on the expectation that you'll get $10,000 a month. Like it is good to have that goal, but you attached yourself to the expectation. And when you did not achieve that, you then became, became unhappy. And what you should really do here is to focus on the intention that you just want to spread the love for Italian food and to uh, share healthy Italian food with other people rather than to focus on that $10,000 mark. Yes, set that goal, but don't attach yourself to that. Focus on your intention and let things flow their way. So this is the same thing for a lot of other things, be it relationships, for example. So let's say you want to be in a relationship, you want to be with someone and some people may attach expectations to just being with this one person. Like they, they fall in love with someone and then they say like, okay, I must be with this person. And then they put all their expectations on that. And let's say the person then rejects them and they feel upset and unhappy. And that is not necessary at all. Um, the reason why you're feeling unhappy is because you had this expectation that you must be with him or her and uh, while on the other hand what you should really be doing here is just to focus on your intention to be in a happy fulfilling loving relationship and then just take actions toward that and work toward finding someone compatible someone that you really like rather than just focusing everything on just this one person and that you, it must be that one person so the fifth principle is really about Letting go of expectations and focusing on the intentions. Okay, the sixth principle is to be grateful for what you have. And I guess sometimes um, I, I assume that a lot of us here are people who are living in developed countries or are suitably and are, we are suitably lucky to have internet connection because that's how I assume you are hearing this web lecture or that you're uh, how you're hearing this podcast and um, for us we are already we are probably a lot luckier than many 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 other people in this world and I think that it is always important that we are grateful for what we have because yes there is always room to grow there is always room to achieve more and we should never ever stop doing that we should never ever stop growing and becoming better at the same time, it's important to recognize what we have and to be grateful for that. And I think that it is um, quite easy for people to forget that, especially people who live in affluent countries, people who uh, live in materialistic uh, societies, they tend to focus on how to get more and more, how to be more and more, and just how to uh, acquire new, newer things and bigger things and better things. And we just forget how lucky we really are. And I think we have to learn to be grateful for what we have, the things that we have in our life, the people that we have in our life. And like for me, I think there are times where I forget that myself as well. Like um, I think there are times where I just take what I have for granted and I just forget like how lucky I am to have all these things. So um, for example, like I'm so lucky to have my parents I'm so lucky to have my mom and my dad and then there are just times when I just take them for granted because they're just there all the time um, but there's going to be a day when they are no longer around like they are growing older and older and I should really just learn to treasure and appreciate what I have the time I have with them mm -hmm. I think there are times when I take for granted 
like uh, the things that I have in my life, uh, my business, the fact that I can be anywhere in the world and still be working on my business, the fact that I'm pursuing my passion and basically not doing something that I don't love but really just doing something that I love and want to do for the rest of my life and uh, many other things and these are the things that I take for granted because they're just always there all the time and I always make an effort now to take stock and to just be grateful like one approach which I adopt in my life now is that I just basically assume that nothing is mine that I am just me and nothing is a given so for example my youtube channel for my web lectures um, there are about 300 plus subscribers right now and to be honest 300 plus subscribers is actually not a lot like it's actually quite little and i can just you know look at it and just think that ah there's just so few subscribers like there's just totally no need for me to create anything or any content until i get like 1000 subscribers or like 2000 or 5000 or 10,000 but that would only be the case if I was putting a certain expectation that I should get a certain number of subscribers. But I'm not. Like for me, I just assume that the subscriber count should be zero. And the fact that there's even one subscriber, let alone like 300 plus subscribers, tells me that there are people who are interested in listening and, and just watching what I have to put out. And it just really makes me grateful, like, like even if there's just one person, okay, just one person listening and one person gaining value, then, then that re just really makes me very happy and that's reason enough for me to create a new web lecture every day and, and create a new podcast as long as it touches someone and it improves someone's life. So... I really just stop looking at figures and numbers and really just start uh, seeing things as um, you know, people and the, the souls behind those numbers and just realizing that all these are real people and all these people are people who can be positively influenced and want to be positively influenced and they want to hear what I have to say and just that just makes me very happy that that's the case and it just makes me very touched that I have this opportunity to impact other people to impact the world and just to share my words out there so um, thanks a lot for listening really like I really appreciate all your support like whether you're listening to this silently or whether you're someone who is vocal and often shares your support via the comment section or uh, whether you just silently click the like button for each video each time like just just thank you like thank you for being there like i really really appreciate that okay um the seventh principle on how to be happy is to think of your ideals versus your problems so i guess um sometimes when we are faced with a certain problem, it's very easy for us to be overwhelmed and to focus on the problem only. And that's perfectly normal. That's perfectly understandable. Because after all, we are faced with the problem right now. Like the biggest thing that we can see now is the problem itself. But understand that um, your, the problems that you're facing now, whatever the obstacles are, they are merely the pit stops before your final goal, your, your final ideal. And it is important that you always focus your eyes on the ideals, that you always focus on seeing uh, what's there beyond the goal, the end destination that you want to achieve, and to fixate yourself on that. Do not let other things come in your way, because every time you look at your problems and you get overwhelmed by them, that's when you're taking your eyes off the goal. And when you take your eyes off the goal, that means that you are now losing your way, you are slowing down your speed, okay, and, and you are impeding on your own progress. So always think of your ideals, uh, because your ideals are what drive you, your problems don't, okay, your ideals drive you. Just focus on them and let them fuel you, let them inspire you and charge you up and take you forward, okay. People do not achieve greatness by working or thinking about their problems. 
people achieve their greatness because they focus on their vision and they don't let their problems overwhelm them. So if you look at any successful people in the world today, Lady Gaga, Oprah Winfrey, um, Steve Jobs, um, Albert Einstein, Bill Gates, and so on and so forth. These are the people who think about their ideals, their visions. They don't think about their problems. The only time they think about their problems is how they can solve them. So focus on your ideals, your visions, and don't let yourself be overwhelmed by your problems. Okay, the eighth principle on how to be happy is to live a purposeful life. I think that um, when we just live a life of meager existence and we don't really think about what we need to do or what we want to do or the things that really charge us up and really inspire us, then that that's the life where we will find moments of unhappiness seeping in more often than not. And that is where having a purpose um, really makes a difference. So for myself, um, I have already set my purpose in life as one where I want to help other people achieve their highest potential and just live their best lives. I have identified as the, that as the most meaningful thing I can ever live for. And that just charges me up every day. Like uh, I have been living um, full time on this purpose since about uh, three and a half years ago. That will be when I started PE and I discovered this purpose about six years ago. So it took about two years for me to live this um, in line with this purpose 100%. And gosh, it's like, it's just part of my life now. Um, it's my reason for being, it's the meaning of my existence and I just can't imagine life without it. Like people often ask me, like, um, would you ever consider, you know, going back to corporate and blah? And I can't even imagine that. I think I'll just die if I were to do that. And this is nothing to do with uh, being the corporate job. It is to do with the fact that um, the other jobs out there would not be in line with what I want to achieve for myself. So if I would ever not live my purpose anymore, like I, there would just be no reason for me to live at all. So I'm just immensely helpful. Uh, I'm just immensely happy living my life right now and just living in line with my purpose. And likewise for you, what is your purpose in life? What is your reason for being? Like, why do you want to live? What makes you happy? What inspires you? Know your purpose and identify your purpose. I think the important thing is that your purpose statement is something that you set for yourself. Nobody says for that for you, okay? Um, not other people, not religion, not anything, but really you. You define how you want to live. So I actually have um, a purpose series on the site and I'll include the URL uh, at the end of the video as well. But um, essentially you can access that at personalexcellence.co slash blog slash purpose. Okay, so it is actually a seven part series on how to discover your purpose and I hope you'll find that helpful. I've also included the exercise as to how I discovered my purpose in that series as well, which is in part six of the seven part series. Okay, the ninth tip on how to be happy is to recognize that happiness is a choice. Okay, I think that um, some people, especially the people who feel victimized by their situation, might find this very hard to accept and comprehend. For example, they may, they may think, what do you mean by happiness is a choice? I'm feeling miserable now and, and this is something I cannot change. Like my problems are so big and I didn't get these problems myself, like other people gave me this problem. So how can you say that happiness is a choice? Okay, I think that um, there is no dispute that the problems that you are facing now are huge. And I think that there is no dispute that um, the problems are situations that other people uh, might have caused you. But how you react to these problems and to these situations is something you can affect. So if you remember what I said earlier in the web lecture just now, 
there are two things that you can effect in life and there's just two things only the first thing is the present moment things in the present moment the second thing is yourself and when i say yourself i'm really referring to your emotions your thoughts how you do things your actions your behaviors your goals your habits and so on and so forth and happiness like how you feel it's a choice it's your choice so like i said um just now like back when you know i was facing that big challenge at work it really just made me realize that no i can't change this situation but how i react to it how i feel about it what i do about it these are all my choices like um as victor franco said before there is a gap between the stimulus and your response and this gap is really your mind and when you choose to process the stimulus and the situation in a different manner your response comes out different your response as to whether you're upset you're unhappy you're angry you're disappointed these things will change when you process the situation differently and then from there you can choose to make uh, to be happy about a certain thing you can choose to feel joyful to feel grateful for the experience okay to feel happy that you got to learn this lesson and so on and so forth and between two emotions happiness and sadness or anger like which one would you want to choose i personally will go for happiness i don't know who will want to go for the other one i don't know what's the point of making yourself feel angry and upset all the time because nobody's living with those emotions like you are like whenever you feel angry pent up disappointed sad upset nervous anxious worry anxiety apprehension who's carrying those emotions you are nobody else is you are the one living with those emotions you are the one carrying those emotions in your heart and you are the one weighing your heart with all those negative emotions just dragging you down and just wearing out your body when that is absolutely not necessary at all so i want you to recognize that happiness is a choice happiness is your choice okay and you can feel happy now you can feel every second even when there's shit thrown in your face it doesn't even matter because you can be happy okay and you are the one who can choose to feel that way nobody can make you feel any way else even if someone tries to make you unhappy you cannot feel unhappy unless you allow that person to make you feel unhappy okay now the 10th and the last principle on how to be happy in life is not to think what if but to think next time and let me explain what i mean by that i think a lot of times when things go wrong it's easy for us to think hey what if i did this and that what if i did that and that like the outcome would have changed like this would be better that would be achieved and things would be different okay but the thing is again the only moment we can effect and change is now it is not the past it is not the future and we can think what if all day long all week long all month long we can think that again and again but nothing is going to change nothing is going to change the past is the past and it's not going to change no matter how long you think about it on the other hand now the present moment is something you can change the future is something you can change when uh, just by way of the actions you take now so by taking the appropriate actions now and by taking the appropriate actions when the same situation arises in the future you can make the results different so this is what it means uh when i say don't think what if but really to think next time and this is something that i have adopted since uh, a while back and it is really 
a great principle to live by. I think it is part of the reason why I am so such an action-oriented person, because I have come to realize that in life,、uh, you can think and talk all you want, and you can、um, hypothesize every single thing, but ultimately, nothing's going to change un- unless you do something about it. So that's the same thing when it comes to thinking about the past. You can think about the past all you want, but if you're not, if it's something that cannot be changed, then nothing's going to change. So if ever you're in situations that are making you unhappy, focus on、uh, what you can do differently next time and what you can do to prevent a situation from occurring. So let's say you're stuck in a traffic jam and you're just so unhappy about that, then. Ask yourself, what can I do next time to ensure that I don't get in a traffic jam? What can I do next time to make the situation more bearable for myself? And then focus on working that. Maybe it's about taking a different route. Maybe it's about finding things that you can do, such as listening to podcasts,、um, like the Personal Excellence podcasts, or、um, having certain audio CDs that you like,、uh, or Talking to、uh, someone, catching up with your friends,、um, or something like this, and these are the things that you can do while you're stuck in the same situation in the future, over being unhappy and feeling upset about it, and think thinking, oh, what if I had taken another route just now? Like I would not have been stuck in the same situation. Like thinking that way doesn't make you happy. Doesn't change anything. So the other thing about、uh, thinking in terms of next time is that when you think in terms of next time, it is an empowering thought. It is something that you can effect. But when you think about、uh, something like what if, it is very much entrenched in the past, and since it's something that you cannot change, it will always disempower you and drag you down. So by changing the way you approach the situation and the way you think about things, it can make a whole world of a difference. So remember, always think in terms of next time and not think in terms of what if. So that's it for today's web lecture, the ten principles on how to be happy. Well, let me do a quick recap right now. The first principle on how to be happy is to attend to negative emotions and thoughts. And not to repress them. The second principle is to take action on what makes you unhappy. So don't just leave things hanging and don't just live with things if they are making you unhappy. Take action on changing them. The third principle is to update your belief system. So、um, if there are beliefs that are making you unhappy and disempowering you, work on them, change them, turn them around, and adopt the empowering beliefs. And the fourth principle is to always focus on seeing the positive over the negative side of things. The fifth principle is to let go of expectations and to focus on intentions. The sixth principle is to be grateful for what you have, because I think a lot of us can take for granted the things that we do have in our life now, and just to always bear in mind that. Nothing is a given. Nothing that we have now are things that we should have. They are all gifts by the universe, by the world, and we should be grateful that we are given those things. The seventh principle is to think of your ideals over your problems. So don't think about、um, your problems, but always to focus on that ideal vision that you want to achieve. The eighth principle is to live a purposeful life. So, what is your purpose?、Uh, what is your meaning? What is your reason for being? Identify that and to live true to that, and that is what's going to bring you fulfillment and happiness. The ninth principle is to recognize that happiness is a choice, and the tenth principle is not to think in terms of what if, but to focus on thinking in terms on next time. Like, what can you effect the next time? So I hope you found this web lecture useful. If you want to read the article, which、um, contains more information and has、uh, a lot more links to useful resources, 
go to this URL, which is personalexcellence.co slash blog slash how to be happy with a dash in between each words. So it's how dash to dash be dash happy. Okay, so I hope you have found this web lecture on how to be happy useful. Thank you so much for listening. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next web lecture. Bye guys.